Uh, every legit build that I've used, I'll, I will try my best to remember all of them during this process and uh, show you guys what I'm doing. So, first things first, I'll start it off really basic and we'll just kind of go from there. If I go for a build that is... or Actually, before I get into the builds, let's talk about my base. The way it starts, the way a game starts for me is I go... One uh, is, my, is a drone that I'm going to scout with. And uh, two is the same drone I'm going to scout with. Three is my overlord. Four is my upgrades. Five is all my hatcheries. Okay? It stays like this all game. Uh, or for, for the beginning of the game. Um, five stays like... What I meant to say is five stays like this all game. But four... The reason why I put my upgrades on four. Okay? So five is obvious. It's my production. It's all my hatcheries. Cool. Everyone understands that. Four, though, is my upgrades. So if you notice, look at all these buildings in my upgrade block here. Notice how you see all of them? The reason why I put them on, on four like this is because I can hit tab and go through them, and I can also upgrade things on them, as you can see. Now look at the control group if I hit five and go four, five, four, five. You see, do you notice something when I go back to the upgrades? You see how there's these little white dots now in these upgrade buildings? If the white dot is there, that means my upgrade is still being worked on. And if I ever go like this, I tap around, go to my other units, go back to my upgrade buildings, and I see a white dot that's missing, like that. I can go, oh, well, my, my hydrogen is not currently being upgraded. I could physically click it and start an upgrade, or I can go tab to it while I'm somewhere else on the map and go like, be like, my, my overlord and go, oh, my hydrogen isn't upgrading. Now it is. It's really, really fast. It makes your upgrades flow really well in the game, and it makes you not miss shit. And upgrades are early game. Up, up, all upgrades are all early game. You're not really getting upgrades usually at the 45 minute mark or the 30 minute mark. Usually all your upgrades are done by 20 minutes or less. Uh, specific upgrades like Baneling Speed or Zergling Speed, those are really fast. But upgrades like your Carapace, Weapon, Attack, whatever, those take a little longer because there's multiple versions of it. Like level 1, 2, and 3. But my point is, is uh, yeah. The white dots are your upgrades. It's super effective at helping you keep track of, uh, keep tabs on your upgrades. You can see they're starting to fall off now. I could go through it again and be like, all right, let's get more upgrades going. Anything that I missed. Yeah, it's all, all of the other ones are done. Like only half my upgrade buildings now are actually doing something because the other ones have literally finished what they're, what they're researching. Now going on a control group of units. Uh, or my control group in general, okay? So this is kind of how the game, it, how it would flow from early game to late game. So let's say we're doing a Zergling style, okay? Zerglings for me will always be on one and uh, like one and two and then three. If I add in Banelings, Banelings will always be on three by themselves and they will also be on one as well. And here's how I use these, okay? So if I'm attacking someone and I'm defending, and it's just, it's something as simple as, alright, we're just going one army versus one army, I can go like this. I can go one A move, and, or I can be like, like if, let's say he's right here, I can be like one move, command all the way back, and three, go forward, like that. I can rotate it out. And actually, I, I kind of said it wrong too. Against Zerg specifically, I actually take Banelings out of control group one, I don't even put them in there at all. But against everything else, everything else. I put Banelings in one as well. Like against Bio, against uh, Terran Protoss altogether, I always do it like that. Against against everything except Ling Bane near match, I will have Banes mixed into group one as well. But against Ling Bane, I will uh, take them out so I don't ever have my Banes on A move ever. So they don't just blow up to like one Ling at a time running at them. Uh, and yeah, I will just. I'll, it makes it easy for you to t like rotate your units in and out like this. You can be like, oh, go this way. No, actually, rotate the other way. Actually, no. Rotate the other way. Actually, no. Rotate the other way. Rotate the other way. Etc. 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 Makes it easy to rotate your stuff to blow up his units. Super easy peasy. Um, to get to get it going like that. And the reason why I have one and two on the same group is because if I ever go like this, I can now have a counterattacking group with a new Ling Bane group. And my counterattacking group is now group two. Always, always, always. Group two is my counterattack group if I want to apply pressure to my opponent's base. So I use three control groups in like early game ZVZ, Ling Bane mirrors, or uh, in general, if I'm ever going Ling Bane styles, two is my counter group, one, three is my, three is always my Banes, and one is my, my general army that's going to fight his army, and two is my counter squad. So. Then that that's that's Ling Ling Bane, and if it's just mass Lings, 
I don't even use group three at all. I just use like, if if I if I'm going like just masslings, I might actually go one two three as uh, two counter attack squads. Three could become a secondary counter attack squad, but it's very rare that I ever go just masslings. A lot of times I will if I'm gonna go masslings style, I'm gonna add banes in. Banes are pretty required the later the later the game goes, and it still applies to what I just said. Like the group three is my banes, group one is my main squad, and group two is my counter squad, and that's ling bane. And now, if we add in roaches to it, if this is early game, we're adding in roaches to Ling Bane. Roaches are always on two now. I get rid of my counterattack squad. Uh, and it, off of group two. Group two becomes my counter... Or, sorry. Group uh, group two becomes my roach squad. And if, 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 if ever, I'm like, you know what? I still want to counter. I want to do a counter. Group six becomes my counter now. Exhausted. So group six is is later on. I'll tell you how I use it uh, more in depth. But group six is my group six is basically my filler. Okay, if that makes sense. Group six is always my filler. Whatever the it's like a versatile control group for me. Does whatever I need. That is over. If I'm overextending my control groups in any way, it's uh, it's always my filler of whatever is uh, important now that I for things I don't want to. And if I you know if I don't want to replace anything else I'm doing. So if I'm gonna counter with this kind of an army now, group six is my filler. Which is now my counter squad. Group 1 is my lings. Group 2 is my roaches. Group 3 is my banes. And the reason why I, le I leave it like this. And I don't have all my roaches and lings in the same control group. Is because if I'm going a lot for a lot of lings. And a lot of roaches. I do not want my lings running into his banes like this. If I'm like on a move. I don't want my lings leading the charge. And then having to be like. Oh no run back. Run away. Lings run away. Okay go in again. Okay lings run away. It's so annoying trying to grab your lings over and over. To get out of the fight. And especially in like uh, Zerg versus Zerg when you're fighting against enemy banes. It's much better if you can have everything go in at once and be like, oh no, he has banes. Now I can micro my roaches and I can also grab my banes to cover my roaches. And I let this squad here go together and my lings can just make sure I don't... I have them on their own group so if I'm ever running away from bane lings, I don't run my entire fucking army away. This way I keep my lings alive and I can zone out his banes and get rid of his banes. And as soon as I get rid of the AoE, the scary part of his bane ling squad, I can engage with my lings. Or, if I really need to engage with my lings, I can actually op go opposite of where the banes are. If, if Let's just uh, pretend that these bane lings are my opponent's banes, okay? If the bane lings are coming towards me, I can go like this. And attack. And go like this. And attack. And go like this. An attack, etc., etc., etc. I can avoid the banes and keep hitting the roaches with my zerglings, if that's what I need to do. If that, if that, the situation calls for it, it makes it really easy to micro oh, what you need to micro yeah. and not mess stuff up. Uh, and so I will isolate my groups like this. And again, six would be like my counter group if I'm gonna go snipe a queen or some drones or some stuff like that. Uh, and then finally, if I'm gonna go into a ravager army, if I'm going for ravagers, okay, like. Uh, uh, there's multiple ways to do this. If I'm going to go from this kind of a composition, and I'm just going to make lots of Ravagers, alright? It's just pure, pure Ravager now. Let's just, let's just pretend I just made all my Roaches into Ravagers. I will leave Ravagers on 2, and uh, Ling on 1, and Bane on 3, or something like that. And it's fine. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just Mouse Micro, like, split my Lings up, and I'll try to get, like... Usually if you're going to go just Mass, ra mass Ravager Zergling, your goal is probably going to be to have Ravagers break something and then flood with Lings, or to surround with Lings and have Ravagers cross about stuff in the middle like a donut. Uh, that's one way to do it. So it would just be one and two. Like all Lings on one, Ravagers on two. Uh, because they're the supporting squad. Or if you're going to go for a style that's like, I'm just going to start mixing in... Um, if I'm just gonna start like mixing in ravagers to my roaches, and I'm just, like as my roaches are starting to die, like this, I'm just like, no, make a ravager out of it. I'll just leave ravagers on two. I'll just leave them on two, and it's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's not a big deal. I'll just have the ravagers, because the thing is, is the ravagers are considered a, a caster. They have an ability, so they will always take priority every time I go to go away from two and go back to two. They always take the priority immediately to cast corrosive bile, so I don't gotta worry about fucking that up at all. And it's it's easy peasy, and we're fine. Now, if I get rid of the lings and if I get rid of the lings altogether, okay, lings are gone. No, lings are no longer a factor in our army currently. They're they're just they're, I'm just going now for Roach Ravager. Roach Ravager becomes one. Roach Ravager is always on one, and Ravagers are on two. 
The reason why is because sometimes your army, if, if my opponent's army is right here, okay? Let's say these banelings are my opponent's army and my army is walking at his army like this. The last thing I fucking want is my ravagers to be going in forward, and uh, first. Because for one, they have more range. Number two, they're really fat. And number three, they're slower than roaches. So it's, it's going to cause problems in a lot of ways. Uh, they're also weaker than roaches. They're going to die really fast. So what I'll do if I if I if my army is running in like really stupidly, I, and I'm like, oh shit, there is there is his army right there. I will go like this. I'll go one, which is everything, attack towards it, and two, back up like this, and then I'll go forward again. So now my ravagers are in the back, and they're not going to be exposed anymore. And I didn't just go like this over and over with my whole army being like, oh, I can't do it. It's it's so sloppy. It was super fast, super clean, super quick. And it was easy peasy, uh, got the shit done really fast, and it, it just, it flowed really well. Now, if I'm gonna cast Curse of Val here, I'll still do, I'll have a 1, it's not a big deal. But at least now I can move my Ravagers freely, if they're ever in a bad spot, like a compromising position, because, like I said before, Ravagers make Roaches have to, like, go around them, and it's really, really annoying. Uh, if they're ever in the front too, in that situation. Now, uh... If I'm going to add in some, and then if I use Banelings, let's say I'm also using Banelings in this kind of composition. This is a bit weird, but I will still leave Banelings on three. Now getting rid of the Banes. Uh, let's say I'm going to go for, uh, now this is, now we're going to go more into like layer based compositions. Let's say I'm going for this kind of an army, and now it's also got Infestors in it. Three is my, usually my AoE or Spellcaster squad. Uh, three basically goes from my Banelings to my, uh to my infestors. My infestors are always like as soon as infestors are out, these units are like the fucking king for me. They these things once they're on the field, nothing replaces them. These things are 3 forever. I never ever 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 take these off of 3. So th that'll be really simple for you guys to understand uh, for future compositions that we'll use with these. Uh they're always 3 that never gets replaced. This is permanent. Uh, it's one of the few units that it works like that for. The only other one that works like that is a broodlord and a viper. But, uh, but yeah, Infestors are three, once they're out. And if I'm going to use Banelings again at this point, Banelings get mixed into one. Banelings just go into one now, because now at this point, if I'm going to be using Banelings, it's 100% going to be a fight where I'm fungling as a priority, not trying to Baneling as a priority. So I am now very confident that I can easily make my Banelings work effectively at this point, just off Mouse Micro. Like if I'm like split, 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 whatever. Because what I'm going to be doing is I'm not going to be rushing for a Baneling first. I'm going to be Fungling or something like that first. So connecting to the army is going to be really, really easy. Because, again, Infestors are my priority here. Uh, at this point now. So Banelings just get mixed into the first group now at that point. Now, another composition would be... Let, let's just... We'll actually take the Infestors away for just a second. I kind of skipped over Roaches briefly. If I use Roaches uh, and Ravagers and I'm going for... Um, attacks and stuff like that, okay? It goes something like this. If I'm like, alright, let's uh, let's go ahead and attack with Roach Ravager, Roach Ravager, whatever. We're attacking, we're attacking. And all of it's on one, Ravages are on two. My first counter squad goes to three. My second counter squad is usually a Drop Lord, and it goes to four. Drop Lord becomes four in this situation, and I drop the shit around their base. If I'm going to go for the style where you drop, like, one or two Drop Lords in their base with Roaches in it, and then you go for, like, Burrow Move Roach Ravager pressure. Roach Ravager all on one for my main army. Group two is my Ravagers, so I never fuck them up and have them in a bad spot. Group three is my Counter Squad if I'm going to Burrow stuff around the map, and Group four would be my Overlord full of four Roaches that's going to drop them. And that's how I would micro that. Uh, and then I would just, if I'm going to be like, group three, go burrow to this base, I would just grab it and be like this. Summon group three, go this way. And then I would hold shift and hit bur unburrow. So when they get to the base, they just get there and they up burrow and they start smacking drones. Same thing with these guys. I'm not doing anything. They're just going to burrow them up burrow themselves. And they just start hitting drones. And then if I ever need to go periodically check on them, I can do that if I want to. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all easy peasy, limp and squeezy. Now let's take Ravagers out of the composition altogether. Uh, we've kind of shown you what we do with Ravagers. Now let's go to Roach Hydra. It's the exact same thing I do with Ravagers. Hydras go on two, and they're also mixed into one. For the exact same reason. If my Hydras are ever in a bad position, where the Hydras are in the front, 
If, if my opponent's army is right here where the drones are. It's the exact same thing. The last thing you want to do is be like, attack, move that. And your hydras start shooting and your roaches are like, all right, let's get around them. And like, it's just going to be really bad. You're going to lose your hydras really fast. So if I'm ever in a position where I get surprised or my army's in a bad spot and I'm like, oh, there's his army. Now I go again. Super easy. I, what I just did there was I went one, a move right here. Two, move command right there. One, a move again right there once the hydras are in position. So one, a move, two, move. One a move. Now hydras are in the back in the back of the line. They're no longer exposed. They're they're properly split the way I want them to be. And uh, at that point now, once I'm done doing the reforming of the army, I could just be like mouse command moving here. Not, you know, mouse making a concave basically, and that'd be fine. Now, uh, and that, that would be it. And if I'm going to use any more, still four would once again be my drop lord group. If I'm going to drop anything anywhere, it's my drop lord group. And if I'm going to uh, add in, uh, like, if I'm going to go Roach, Hydra, Drop Lord, plus Bro Move, again, three is my Drop, my, uh, my Bro Move squad. And that's it. And four is my Drops. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting. If you remember, I said three is my, my King fucking Infester squad. If I'm going Roach, Hydra, Infester, Bro Move, Drops. We're getting a little more complicated here. Three becomes my Infesters, always. And if I'm going to burrow move shit around, that's now six. Six is my filler. My fillers, my, my, uh, my versatile filler group, if you remember I said that. So six would now become my burrow move because I'm using infestors as part of my composition. And again, if I had like ravagers in again, it goes back into one. Uh, if I were to go ravager plus hydra, I would just add ravagers into two as well. So the exact same thing. I could just rotate ravagers and hydras back, roaches forward. Uh, and But all of it would also be in one. And then, yeah, Burn Roach on 6, Drop Lords on 4. Now, we're getting a little more complicated. Uh, let's say I'm also now going to add in uh, Lurkers. It depends how I'm going to use these things. But if my Lurkers... If I'm, if I'm going to add in Lurkers to this kind of a composition, now I'm, uh, I'm going to be going for Drop Lord, Infester, Lurker, Roach, Hydra. From this point on, now... I actually will rebind my lurkers to two. Six will still be my my uh, harass group. Four could still be my drop lords. Three will still be my uh, my king infester squad. And one two now two one two is actually just going to be hydra at this point because now at this point here's why I do stuff like this. You might be like, wait, what the fuck? Why don't you leave lurkers with two? And the reason why is because if you have lurkers in this kind of a composition, the game completely changes the way you play it. The way I'm going to be playing this kind of a game is I'm not going to just be walking out in the middle of the map looking for a big concave. Instead, I'm going to be looking for a juicy-ass fucking lurker position to engage on. So my concave is nowhere near as important now. Now what's important is making sure my lurkers are in the right spot at the right time so they can burrow and be in the right position. And then I just... I can very easily just fill in the back line with my Roach Hydra behind it and we're good. Ro be Hydra Hydra's being in front of Roaches is not my fucking priority anymore. To be honest, when I go for this kind of a composition, I'm usually going to get rid of all my roaches anyways. It's kind of going to just become all... If I make a roach, it's going to just become part of group 6. And it's going to go harass the base. It's not really going to be part of my army because lurkers are a replacement to roaches. Um, but lurkers are not a non-attacking unit. Lurkers are a babysitting unit. This unit needs to be taken control of very meticulously. If you just walk lurkers around willy-nilly and you're like, Oh, fucking walk over there. Do you just kind of just ignore them? Even if they're on A-move, they don't just burrow as soon as they see an enemy unit. You have to physically tell them to do it. So this unit is very fragile if you don't pay attention to it. And it could die very easily without defending itself. So I put these in their own control group because they require more of my attention. Um, now, let's say I have... Uh, let, let's say I'm up against a Terran player or something. And he has a lot of Liberators. Uh, and I'm going to be like, oh, I want Corruptors now. This is how the game kind of changes again. Group four would become my, uh, group four would become like my lurkers here now, because at this point now, if I'm, if I'm going, if I am going up against a death ball based composition where it's a very well-rounded army and I can no longer abuse little things now, and now the army needs to be, it, it's getting to that point now where it's like death ball versus death ball. Group two is now my anti-air group because now I need something that can deal with the air. 
Hydras cannot deal with the air because they're fucking liberators. And if I if you've ever tried to fight liberators with hydras, especially if they're like all here and you're like, let's walk through the fields, your hydras all fucking die. So now group two becomes my corruptor group because this is group two is usually my backline support group or my anti-air group, depending on what stage of the game I'm at. So group two becomes corruptor, group four becomes lurker, and I have multiple ways I can do this uh, with the lurker. I can either bind them into a control group with drop lords, if I'm going to drop my lurkers around the map, or it's just going to stay as group four if I'm going to, uh, if I'm just going to use these as is. It, it's whatever. It's, it, it, if I'm just going to use these lurkers as as frontal pushes, fr frontal pushing units, then they'll stay in group four and that's it. No drop lords involved. <clears throat> but if, let's just say, let's get even more technical and I'm like, well, I'm going to also drop some stuff as well. Uh, I do want to drop like two lurkers on his base while using eight lurkers in the middle of the map. Group six becomes my drop lord now. It is now a filler group. I now need this as just like a, a it's like just an ex accessory for this point in the game. It's now my drop lord. It replaces my burrow move roaches. Uh, and there you go. And now I have lurk like a couple lurkers in group six with an overlord with the most of my lurkers in group four with my army being roach hydra, corruptor, infester, lurker. Stuff like that. Now... Uh, and then finally, uh, going off this current composition, because let's just keep doing it, because we're still on it. Let's say now I, I, uh, want to add in Broodlords to my group. Broodlord, if you remember I said before, Broodlords are like another king unit for me. The second I start using Broodlords, this unit dominates group four. Group four is always either my drop group or my siege group. Uh, so it's going to be my swarm host group, it's going to be my Broodlord group, it's going to be my drop group, my drop lord group. Things like that. Uh, and this is all after... Um, going back to what I talked about just a second ago, too. Earlier in the game, I did say Group 4 was my upgrade group. And that is what it is until I get something that utilizes either Drops or Siege. Which is, by the time I get something that does that, most of my main upgrades are done anyways. And I can just keep tabs on uh, my Evo Chambers and stuff like that uh, later. Uh, if I really want to. Another thing you can do, this is not what I do, but if you really like the whole white dot tech, uh, the trick, and you're not really able to keep tabs on your hatcheries, or on your, on your upgrades, you can actually just add your Spire and your, uh, your Evo Chamber to Control Group 5, and you can see the upgrades on those, like that. If you, so if you go 5, produce units, hatcheries always take priority anyways, so it's not going to fuck up your larva, but then you can see these, these things on the side. You can do that if you want, if you need help with keeping tabs on the white dots. But if you don't need it at this point, if you're a higher level player and you're like, I can just really maximize that shit no matter. I know I know internally the feeling when upgrades finish, I can just I can mentally keep track of that. And you don't need it, it's fine. But and so that is something you can do to replace group four from earlier on, like the way I showed you a second ago. Uh, but anyways, back to this. So group four becomes my broodlords. And now I no longer have a group for for Lurker. So Lurker actually go as part of group one. Because once again, the game has now changed and priorities change. Because now, if, if I'm going to be going for Infestor Broodlord as my main composition, this unit is now a supporting unit, just like this unit. So, in supporting units, just so you guys know, supporting units get uh, they get microed after primary units. So, if I'm if my Broodlord is my primary unit here, this unit always dictates where the fight happens. This unit should be microed first, not second. It should be microed first. And because if I'm micro, if I'm like lurkers, go over, the, go over here, bro. And my broodlords are way the fuck back here. And here's his army coming forward and just beating the shit out of my lurkers. And I'm like, oh god, primary unit, get up there. The fight could already be over, and I might lose part of my army before my actual unit that's supposed to make the primary engagements happen. It might even not be there by the time the other part of my army, by the other by the time the other part of my army dies. Does that make sense? Every fight at this point now is dictated off where the broodlords go. I don't ever fight without them at this point for my main army. So my, my lurkers can go in group one now and they can be a supporting unit to the broodlords. So if I'm like, oh, there he is, move on to the broodlords, burrow. And now my army can support the broodlords. It's a supporting unit now. It's not a pushing unit. It's not a siege unit. It's a support unit because now I have a new siege unit. This is this is the king dick siege unit for Zerg. Uh, and then now finally, if I'm going to even make my army even more diverse... And I'm not in Vipers. Vipers are another king unit for me. So again, king units are these three units right here. Infester, Broodlord, Viper. 
All three of these units are king units. They're primary units that need to be controlled as a priority. Group zero is my viper. And I rebound zero in my hockeys to, uh, to tilde, which is this key right here. Select control group 10 is tilde. So I literally, all I hit is the key to the left of one. It's right under escape. I can control my viper this way. And I can move my, and I only ever put vipers on this group. I never put anything else on it. Uh, and if I, if I would have been using this control group for like, ever since I first started, I probably would use more for this control group. But I added in this control group to my play in like 2014, like way after I had kind of established everything I was already doing. Uh, basically, I, I added it in because Viper was a new unit Zerg had, and it didn't really fit a role. Because I would never replace Vipers with Infestors, and I think putting Vipers and Infestors in the same control group is fucking terrible. Don't ever do that. Uh, so I needed something new. I, I basically made a new hockey when Viper came out. Uh, I can't remember when Heart of the Storm came out. Was it 2013? 2014? Either way, I, I made a new hockey for this unit because it's a new unit and it's a caster. It's important. Uh, so I made control group zero because of that. Anyways, this always goes on zero. It just fits. It works. It, I love it. It's actually so easy to micro because I, whenever I micro infestor, infestor viper at the same time, I micro three and tilde together, and it's really easy to synergize it. It, it flows really well with your hand on the keyboard. It's not far apart. It's it's just easy peasy. Uh, and then that, that's how I would use it as part of my composition now. I would all, and all these, if I have Viper, this is the last thing I'll say, and I'll move on from the casters. If I ever have a Viper by itself, this is a primary unit, and it gets microed as a priority. But, if I ever have Infestors, if I ever have Infestors mixed with Vipers, a Viper becomes a supporting unit to, a, to an Infestor, and an Infestor is now the primary unit. The Infestor becomes the one you micro first every time. Because if you ever have both of these units, and you're trying to cast Parasitic Bombs before you cast the Fungal Growth, you're doing it backwards. It's much easier and much more impactful if you cast a Parasitic Bomb after a unit, after a clump of units has been fungled, because it makes the bomb do more damage, guaranteed. There's, even no matter how good your opponent is at micro, if you fungal him and then bomb him, it will guaranteed do more damage than it will if you just throw a fucking bomb out out of nowhere and he just goes, oh, let's just grab that unit and throw it away. Just split it off. It's so easy to get rid of a unit that's bombed if you do it while there's no mobility reducing factor there. There's no fungal on the unit as well. So fungal first, always. Infestors are primary, vipers are a secondary. Uh, but both are important. Both need their own control group. They're both super important units. They're still, in my opinion, for my army, they are both still king units overall. And, uh, and finally, if I'm going to add in, you guys have seen me do this a lot. If I'm going to add in uh, Mutalisk now to my army, I will get rid of this army entirely because this army is now a piece of shit. Uh, you don't want to have, if you're going to go for pure, full Skyzerg army, you do not want this as part of your army anymore. It's, it's fucking terrible. Lurkers now go to control group six because this is now a different kind of a task here. This is now a filler group. This is now either base defense or it's a supporting unit to a Broodlord. And now a Mutalisk becomes group one. Group one becomes my, uh, my, pri my, uh, my main attack force outside of all my other tasks. So group Mutas become group one. I, and then I can add in an Overseer to, uh, to group one. Or I'll, I'll talk about Overseers in a second. Uh, they just become my main attack force. I can use them to either attack bases as a counterattack squad, or I can use them to support my Broodlords if it makes sense. Um, a lot of times, if I have Broodlord, Corruptor, and Fester, these will become counterattack. I'll go opposite of this army, and I'll go kill bases and shit. Uh, but yeah, as, as soon as I get to full Skyzerg, Mutas become group 1. Corruptors stay group 2, Infestors group 3, Broodlord group 4, Viper group 0, Filler group 6. Group 6 could be Roaches, it could be Lurkers, it could be a group of Hydras. I do the same thing when I play against Protoss and I have like four Hydras in my main to kill a Prism. That is also group six. It's just a filler group. It's it's whatever I need that's extra at that time. Uh, sometimes, and here's the last thing too about Mitas. Sometimes, group six could actually also become... Uh, group six could become my Mitas. If I ever play against a Terran that goes for counterattacks all the time with like Liberators and Banshees, 
If, if let's say I have like 20 mitos on group 1 and I have like 5 mitos on group 6. I just take 5 extra mitos and their whole purpose in life is to go snipe little air units that are harassing me all over the place. That could be a filler group then too if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of like this is kind of like getting the supreme death ball in game shit. Uh, well, we kind of I feel like we kind of skipped over a couple of the layer compositions and uh, a little bit of the other side of the hive, but this is death ball type shit right here. So I, I feel like we've kind of covered that. Now let's kind of reset here and go to a different composition style. Uh, let's say I'm going Ling Bane, which is what we had earlier, uh, and now we also have. Um, Queens in my army. So Queens become group 2, always. Uh, for now. Until I get an air unit, they're group 2. Queens are group 2 in this in this type of position. And they're also mixed into group 1, but they're also by themselves are group 2. And it's the exact same reason. If I ever want to move my Queens specifically somewhere else and get them covered, same logic as the Ravagers and the Hydras earlier. They just could get the fuck in the back right away if they need to. And if I add in, like, let's say Ultras, Ultras just get mixed into group 1. Super easy. And if I'm in a micro situation where it's like this big fat army, I can be like, group one, go, transfuse, transfuse, whatever. And again, group six could become my counterattack squad if I want to send stuff around the map. Uh, like that. And then if I'm going to add in infestors, that means that my banelings no longer are hotkeyed on their own group. Because now, again, priorities change and infestors are now the priority. Banelings are no longer the priority. I sh banelings are now a supporting unit to this unit. This is something that I think a lot of people don't understand. They don't understand priorities. Because uh, I'll see some people sometimes where it's like, oh, I have... Okay, I, I do make my own control group for Banelings. And then they add in Infestors. And they just fucking add Infestors into group 1 and leave Banelings on their own group. When it's that's doing it backwards. Like, if Banelings connect to the target and kill the target, you basically win the game. But doing it where the Infestors are always running in the front and they're going to fucking die because they're mixed in your first control group and they just walk in, maybe fungal two times and just die to an army. You lose your Infestors that way. And it also makes it less likely, for multiple reasons, that your Banelings are going to connect to shit. Because one, your your Infestors might just be in the way of some of your Banelings and be just like their fat asses are just blocking the Banelings. And you can't actually get them in the right spot at the right time. Two, maybe your your infestors just straight up fucking die before they can even cast the fungal because you're leading them in the ch leading them in the charge with your army, so you just forego the entire ability to cast fungal growth now. So now it once again makes your banelings lives harder to connect to shit, and it doesn't matter if you're microing them in their own control group or not. The fact that you can't fungal your target now means that making these infestors was irrelevant. These units should not be the priority over the infestor. If the Infestors are the priority and you actually go, Oh, there, there is his army, and I have Infestors as their own control group. It's super easy to micro. I just fungled his entire army. Well, now if you A-move your Banelings with the rest of your army, there's a very good chance you're just going to crush everything with connections because he can't really move anymore. Stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, Infestors would be in group 3 by themselves again. It is a king unit in the Zerg army for me. It never gets replaced once I have it. I know I do not put it in group one ever. I, it's always by itself in group three when I make it. And then if I was to add in anything else beyond this, if I was to go into let's say let's say again the Terrans got liberators, well group two uh, loses its. Uh, where are my fucking corruptors? There they are. Group two once again loses the queens and group two becomes corruptors. Group two is almost always. This is like a pseudo king. It's very rare. There's only one composition ever that I do not use Corruptors in Group 2. And instead I put them in Group 3. Um, but other than other than that one composition, which I'll explain in a minute, Corruptors are always Group 2. Because uh, it's just it's my anti-air group, it's a priority group. And yeah, it's always Group 2, except for one time. Uh, and then now at this point, Queens, uh, Queens are no longer really the priority. The last thing I'm going to be doing is being like, oh, I need to move my queens in the back of my army because I'm not going to be moving on the map and putting myself in positions anymore to have that even be an issue because the, the game has changed and now I need liberate or now I need corruptors and the only time I'm going to need these fucking corruptors is if like the Terran goes for like battle cruisers or liberators or something like that or if the Protoss is going for like mass air and now it's which means it's fucking irrelevant if my corruptor or if my queens are either in front or behind the ultras because if I throw my army at his at his air army like this and I'm like oh move around I'm playing the game fucking terrible at that point anyways so it becomes an irrelevant thing it, it's no longer a factor it's more of a factor versus someone who's going like mass marines and medevacs you know what I mean 
there's sequences and stages of the game that always dictate what's important at what time. So having your queens in front or behind your fucking ultras are super irrelevant now if I need corruptors. Uh, so again, corruptors take the priority now in this control group. And they replace queens. Now, to exp and then, yeah, and this is kind of how it goes for me for late game. I, one building I haven't really explained yet is Nidus. Nidus for me is always six, or not six, sorry, it's seven, eight, nine. Six is uh, always my my filler group. I didn't mean to bind it to six. Uh, but yeah, seven, eight, nine is always my Nidus group. And, and some of you might be wondering, why do you have three control groups for Nidus? And it's because seven, eight, and nine are hotkeys that are really unreliable to use accurately, especially if you're playing at like 400 APM. You can't just be like, oh, I need to go eight, eight, eight. You have because the reason why is because when you do that, try it yourself. If you hit eight on the keyboard, your fingers, these three fingers right here, your middle three fingers, do not stay on the keyboard anymore. They, you lift, you literally lift your hand up and go over and tap a key. You're guessing where the fucking key is. You, you can guess pretty well. You can probably hit the key pretty accurately, but you might hit seven, you might hit nine, you might hit eight. It happens to me every time. Because I do not physically take my hand and go like this when I want a Ninus. I don't have my keys and my hands on the keyboard to go like, uh, do like some weird action with my wrist. That takes way longer to hit it if you do something like that. Instead, I just literally go like this. Just tap the key like that really fast with my index finger. So I literally lift my hand off the keyboard and it's way harder to be accurate. Which is why I don't bind anything important that needs to be, like, I don't bind like my fucking mutas to eight. Or like my banelings or infestors to eight, seven or nine. I don't do any of that. I just bind a 789 because I literally lift my hand off and I hit the key. Uh, and it's the same Nidus. Those keys are kind of shitty keys to have, and it, but it's still useful if I have it like this. I've, I found that I never... I literally have 100% accuracy with these three like this. I've never fucked it up. Uh, but when I, when I used to only do one, I would fuck it up all the time. Uh, so I've, I, yeah, I've, this is through experience. I've learned that that works really well. And then... Again, group zero, I don't actually hit zero on the keyboard, it's tilde. So anyone who's wondering about that, it, it is, I rebound that key to, zero, to tilde. Uh, and then, yeah, and that's kind of like my in-game shit. And then I will, if I ever make multiple Nidus's, they just get added into this as well. Like if I make three entrances or two entrances, I just go like seven, eight, nine, whatever. I hit a key over there. I always hit it right if there's three of them. And now finally, so we've kind of gone over that. Now there's one control group combination that I haven't really gone over yet. And it's Mutalisk, Zergling, Baneling, and things like that. So if I'm going to go Mutal, Mutal Ling, Bane. Once again, Ling, Bane share group 1. Banes are on group 3. Mutas are on group 2. Okay? So Mutas are on group 2 here. If I'm going to go Mutal Ling, Bane styles. And when I do this, I can go 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and I can move my army. And the reason why I think it's important to have your own units on their own on their own uh, control groups for your ground army, Ling Bane on one, and your air army on another, is because what if there was something here that I wanted to kill or I wanted to go to, <coughs> like a bunch of marines, for instance, and I have all my Ling Bane on the same control group. Watch how much how much longer it takes for my Ling Bane to get there, opposed to my Mutas getting there, and this happens all the time. My mutas would already be getting shot and killed before the lings even arrive because terrain blocks my ground from going where the air goes. So the last thing you want to do is put air and ground in the same control group because your air will die sometimes way before your ground gets there. So having your air be able to go like this and around makes a lot more sense. So you don't lose your shit in a weird, op weird, inefficient way. Another reason is because if, let's say there was a siege tank there, like a siege tank's right there, or and it's covered by maybe like two marines or something like that. Something I'm not really scared of with the mutas. Or maybe there's like five siege tanks here. And I go like this. I go attack the tank. And now suddenly all my Ling Bane are getting shot by tanks. Which don't even need to die. Because the mutas are going to kill the tanks either way. It's, well then uh, now it's fucking bad for the Ling Bane to be in the control group. And my mutas are totally good. But the Ling Bane should definitely not be going there. It would be much easier if I just had the mutas go by themselves and do that. So that is the main reason why you separate them. And then uh... It makes it just easier to also have multiple multiple parts of the map covered. Like you can send your mutas to kill a medevac while your Ling Bane covered ground somewhere else. Whatever. It's just important to spread it out. And then it's the same thing with the the Banes. Some sometimes the Banes actually want to be in front of the Lings. There's very sometimes it makes sense 
If like your opponent has 100% marines and you more than 100% know you have enough banes to surround him and kill him, you might want to lead with the banes first then. Or if you're going to bust a wall down, for instance. Let's say let's say there's like two depots and a barracks here and you want to bust the bust the depot down. You don't want to lead with your links because it's going to block the banes out. So you want to lead with the with the banes to blow the wall down. Again, another reason why own control group for banelings makes sense. Even though they're mixed in group one, you can move the banes first as a priority if you ever need to. And then if this army ever evolves, now we're going to talk about Protoss. If this kind of an army ever evolves to a situation where, if I'm going like Mutalisk or Zergling, let's say I have Gling Bane Muta against Protoss, and he now goes for Mass Phoenix. And I'm like, ah shit, I need Corruptor. This is the only time I ever do this with Corruptor. And it's, I've just noticed it makes a lot of... It just works really well. I put Corruptors on three. And Ling Bane just stays on one now. And the reason why I do this... Is and I do not use a filler group. This is, this is the only time I ever don't use a filler group. And it's because... This kind of an army... If you're going up against the mutal, like a like Phoenix play. We're talking like... A pronounce who goes like Archon, Charge Lot, Phoenix, Storm. Or something like that. The reason why I don't use six is because this army needs to be rapidly moved often. You need to make sure you're not throwing your army away. Like like two seconds of being like, whoops, can lose you the entire game. So having to go to six over and over and over and over is way more stressful on the whole situation. It's way harder to hit accurately all the time when you're microing three things at once all the time. So having keys right next to each other, like two and three, two, three, two, three, two, three, make a lot of sense because it makes it way easier to micro properly. And what I will do in situations like this is if I ever see isolated units that Ling Bane can crush, or just, it doesn't even have to be a Bane, sometimes it's just pure Ling. I can crush it with, with one, be like, one, go there, kill that shit. Uh, and I can also pounce on things that look like they're easy to kill with two. Like, Muta, Ling, go kill it, one, two, That's it. one, two, A move, A move, like that. Well, let's say a group of phoenixes. Let's just pretend these are phoenix, okay? Right here. These are phoenix. Let's say phoenix are flying at my my uh, mutas. I'm like, ling, ling muta, attack, attack. And I'm like, oh shit, here comes the phoenix. I will literally go like this. Rotate. And let's say the, the, the phoenix are going to like chase my mutas around. I can rotate. I can just rotate. Okay, this is really hard to do by myself. Uh, I can rotate my mutas away from the from what the phoenix would be doing around my corruptor, and my corruptor can sit in the middle. I can always just make my mutas go opposite where the phoenix are, and not have a situation where my corruptor and my muta are going like this together. Because everyone I've ever watched play this fucking game, for the most part, like not everyone, but a lot of people, like to go up against phoenix and go like this together. But if you notice, a mutalisk flies faster than a corruptor. So a Mutalisk is always going to get shot first by a Phoenix, which means you're always going to lose Mutas you shouldn't be losing because you're leading the charge with Mutas. It happens every time. But if you let Mutas and Corruptors be isolated, you can be like, Corruptors lead where the Phoenix are, and Mutas can just go behind them and as like a supporting unit. This is now primary. This is support. As long as the primary is zoning out the anti-air, your supporting unit can always be behind it and never be, never be exposed to being killed by the Phoenix. Does that make sense? That's why I do it like that. And it makes it way easier to micro, and it also makes it easy to micro in a sense where, like, if you're getting flanked by Phoenix, you're like, oh shit. Now you can follow the, the Corruptors again and not have to worry. It, it just makes it a lot- you have, like, way more control of what your army actually wants to do. Anyways, uh, and lastly, the, the last thing I kind of didn't really talk about yet, which we have- we will cover really fast is Overseers. Overseers go on two control groups all the time. Where are my Overseers? I made some somewhere. There they are. So I have two control groups, but I have three uses for Overseers. Here's the first use. It just goes in group one. My main attack force, a lot of times, will need an Overseer. There could be Dark Templars. Maybe my main attack force has Hydras in it, and there are Banshees. Maybe there are Lurkers. Maybe wh Like, whatever. Burrowed Banelings. Fucking anything that could be stealth. If my main attack force has to deal with it, it goes in one. It, I always put an overseer in group one if, I, if there are uh, cloaked units in the game as a possibility or whatever. Group two always gets the majority of my overseers. So group one always gets one or two. 
Because it's very unlikely that they're always just going to be dying all the time. You just need them to be spotting shit. So one or two Overseers is totally fine in Group 1. Group 2, however, usually gets like four or five Overseers, especially if it's like late game. Because Group 2 becomes my scouting group. Uh, and it also becomes my... Uh, just extra detection because group two is also an air group and these corruptors and or if, if, if they're like corruptors let's say and overseers let's say i have broodlord corruptor there's a good chance that these corrupt these overseers might get shot by like vikings by tempest uh something like that usually whatever whatever you can think of which makes sense to have corruptor broodlord there's a good chance your opponent has air units as well they're going to shoot back at you and these corruptors have a chance to die uh, especially if you're up against like a mothership you need more than like one. I usually make like four or five in this control group with like 16 corruptors or something like that. And then I can also go two tab, uh, two tab, hold down C, and it shits out changelings everywhere and I can just spread these out. And this becomes my late game scouting group whenever I want to uh, see where my opponent's army is because so doing something like this is majorly important. Because if, you, if you're ever the kind of guy that's like, I'm just gonna fly around fucking blind. You're going to lose a lot of games because you're not going to have any idea what you're doing. You're just going to fly into death a lot of times. A lot of fights in StarCraft 2 can end within seconds if you take a bad fight. So this group, you can see how easy it is to spread changelings out. They're still going. They're, like Right now I have so much more vision of the map off of what I just did for like two seconds earlier. I just shit them out and I sent them all over the place and now I have all this checkpoint vision on the map. It's important to do this all the time because you know where your opponent is and... Uh, it just helps create a good fight for you. And then the last thing I will do with Overseers is I will physically not control group it, but I will tell one or two Overseers to right click on a Broodlord and I'll just forget about them. I always have like one or two Overseers following a Broodlord because this helps you deal with Widow Mines. It helps you deal with Ghost. It helps you deal with anything on the ground that can fuck a Broodlord up. Because in Overseer, as you can see, it just hugs the ass of a Broodlord and it continuously gives the Broodlord detection so you don't fly over stealth shit. The biggest one is Widow Mines. Uh, it, it helps, because against Ghost, you obviously don't want to be moving out against Ghost and not knowing where the Ghosts are. Against Ghost, you really want to have, like, Infestors ready to, like, deal with that as fast as you can. Because Snipe is a very scary thing. But against, like, people who stagger Widow Mines all over the place, this is amazing. You'll always see a Widow Mine before it shoots a Broodlord. If the Broodlord is on a move. And it will kill the Widow Mine. So this just makes a lot of sense. It makes it fucking easy to not lose Broodlords. Like, not, not go back to your army and be like, what the hell, I just flew over like five Widow Mines. Oh my god, my Broodlord just died. That just doesn't happen. And, yeah. I don't know, I think we kind of covered it, man. It took me about an hour to go over this. Uh, I, not really. I started the video a little bit later than that, but still. It took a while. And that's kind of the sequence of control groups, guys. So if you liked it, hit that follow button. Hit that subscribe button. Come check out the Twitch. Twitch.tv slash vibe lol. And I'll see you guys in the uh, in the next video. Good luck in your games. Adios. Peace.